Hello, and welcome to part six of the new tutor training videos from Learning Works' English Language and Literacy Program. Part six, goal setting and lesson planning. In this lesson, you'll learn about and practice setting what we call SMART goals for your student. You'll troubleshoot goal setting with some practice scenarios, and you'll gain an understanding of lesson planning basics, and you'll also look at examples of lesson plans. In this As a tutor working with a student, goals will drive the work you do together. It's important to help students clarify their goals and objectives, since many of them come to the program with only a vague understanding of what they want to improve. They may cite reading in general as an area of improvement or speaking, but how do we help students make more specific goals? These goals that they name off the bat might seem really big, and it's important for tutors to develop ones that are more concrete and achievable, and most importantly, can be accomplished within the specific time frame that you'll be working in. So, what are SMART goals? Goals that are SMART are, for one, specific. The goal will clearly define what you are going to do. The goal will be measurable. There will be some tangible evidence that you have accomplished the goal. An achievable goal will be different for different kinds of students at different levels. But an achievable goal is something that might stretch you a little bit so that you feel challenged, but it's not so difficult that it's totally outside of your realm of possibility given where you are as a learner. A SMART goal is also results driven. This means that outcomes are measured, not activities. So a goal is not going to just be meeting once a week and learning. The meeting once a week and learning something will respond and correspond to a more results driven goal in the future. Finally, a goal must be time bound. It must be linked to a time frame that creates a practical sense of urgency or results in tension between the current reality, so what a student can already do or what they know, and some vision of the goal in the future. Without this tension of what is and what might be accomplished, it's unlikely that the goal will produce a relevant outcome. All of the students who come to our program are motivated to do so because they know that they need help to accomplish their English language goals. However, as mentioned before, sometimes these goals are vague and very broad, and they need to be, quote, smartened up before tutors can not only begin to work on them, but make any progress at all. So let's look at some examples of those. The goals listed on the left are not particularly SMART as per the standards of the acronym, but they are very common. Many students list broad, vague goals as the goals they'd like to accomplish as English language learners. Let's look at some examples and read some smarter goals, goals that are more specific, measurable, achievable, results-driven, and time-bound. Take a moment to compare each of these goals and recognize those SMART elements in the improved goals on the right. The goals Now let's practice setting some SMART goals for some hypothetical students. Take a moment to read the context of this student and her broad goal that she's named. Then think about how she might make this a SMART goal and how you might help her do this as a tutor. What are some potential SMART goals you could suggest for Heba? They will appear at the bottom of the screen. Here's another chance to practice setting example SMART goals for a hypothetical student. Take a look at this learner and read about her broad goals. How would you help her make this a SMART goal? Some examples, again, will pop up on the bottom of the screen. The ones that we've suggested here are not necessarily time bound as the length of time it might take someone to accomplish a goal varies so widely between students. Here's 
the more you learn about your students and the more you help them develop their broad goals into more specific goals, the better your lesson plans will be. If you've taught or tutored before, you may have familiar methods for successfully planning lessons. However, for anyone or for those new to the field of tutoring, we like to provide a few basic tips and tools that can help you plan your lessons. A lesson plan is a step-by-step -step guide that will outline your objectives for the student that you work with in terms of what you hope to accomplish that day. A lesson plan may involve a purpose or goal, some activities or tasks or ways to practice, and a specific set of materials that you might use that day. Lesson plans should be informed by your students' needs and assessments. You might continually do some trial and error to figure out what the best format of lesson plan, whether that means the duration of it, the routines, the different components that you use, uh, to figure out which of those is the most successful. Teachers do it all the time, trying to figure out always the best way to serve the student's needs. A le no matter what form your lesson plans take, we feel that all tutors can incorporate what we feel are the three P's of lesson planning. The first is presentation. As the English speaker in the room, you will be depended on by the student to correctly model language usage. You'll show what to do. You might speak, read, write, or explain a rule. Practice is any activity that allows your student to practice with concepts. That includes language, and vocabulary. So any tasks, games, repetitive exercises, it's a great way to make sure your student has a chance to try something new or to practice something older, maybe reviewing a previous day's lesson. And finally, production is any activity that'll allow your student to demonstrate improvement or mastery. So similar to practice, this is a student putting forth the effort although it usually comes towards the end of um, a part of the lesson or towards the end of the lesson itself when you might ask the student, okay, one more time, can you explain or show or try this thing? And for beginners, that just might be repeating some new words or answering some simple questions. And for more advanced students, they may be able to fully explain something or use something new in some context sh to show that they truly understand. But any of these P's of lesson planning can be included at any time. We provide new tutors a lesson plan template that we find clearly lays out the main components that we think are important for planning lessons. The image here of our template is a little hard to see, so we've expanded a couple of the key areas. We'll also spend some time in our in-person orientation session going over lesson plan components. But here, the main parts of the lesson plan are divided into an overall purpose, the materials you might need, um, a step-by-step -step plan for any activities or introducing the material, some areas to write about backup plans or miscellaneous extra practice or include some homework or extra practice at home for the student. But we feel that in one lesson you may cover multiple topics. So you might include some combination of reading, speaking, learning new words, or writing with your student. So in this example lesson plan, speaking and writing are the two areas that the tutor is focusing on. Their student sounds like a beginner, possibly a low or high beginner, but for the speaking part of the lesson plan, the tutor has planned a series of activities. You can read over those and you can think about how you might arrange these activities. Some people like to include some estimated time frames, such as five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes at a time for each of these kinds of practice. Um, so imagine yourself doing these kinds of activities with your student. The tutor in this hypothetical lesson plan may not get to all four, but that's okay. It's better to plan for too much than too little. Another part of the lesson plan the tutor has prepared for is a couple writing exercises, including printing 
one's name and address for the student and practice writing the numbers. So this is just two potential areas of study for a hypothetical beginner learner and how it might look in a lesson plan. Here's another example lesson plan. This time we've taken away the template just so for the purposes of this presentation you can better read the text. The purpose of this lesson plan is a common one for ESL students, which is how to use prepositions and navigational phrases to describe locations and directions. First, the tutor plans to present the information, to use a series of prepositions, and they're listed here, and modeling them. In this case, the modeling is very literal. To teach prepositions, it's often helpful to physically show what it looks like to be in or next to or behind something. The practice that the tutor has planned includes using a map of a town, maybe even using a specific map of a neighborhood to show the student where various places are located. You can even use a map from a picture dictionary or textbook. So with the student having modeled and perhaps repeated some of the prepositions, the tutor and the student together work on the students practicing where these places are. So the tutor might prompt the student where is or tell me, and the student will practice using prepositions to explain where places are located on a map. Finally, production will give the student a chance to show the tutor what they have learned. So using a different map or a different picture, the tutor plans to ask the student where certain businesses are located and will measure the student's ability to do it correctly. You can even continue the discussion. It looks like here the tutor has planned for some deeper discussion without the map to maybe practice using prepositions in a more abstract way. So just talking about the location of different places. Next, in part seven, the final part of the presentation, we'll discuss setting boundaries and expectations with your student. You'll gain an understanding of the importance of boundaries for a program such as this one, and you'll learn about the monthly tutor reports that you'll be completing at the end of every month. 